No. Uh, hey there, kids. It's me, Mr. Groovy Pasta. And before we get started on tonight's video, I'm just going to talk to you about one quick little tiny little thing. And that's going to be about blue light. Not like this kind of blue, but the blue light that's actually coming out of your screen. So we actually spend a lot more time looking at screens these days, mostly for things like this, YouTube. Also, video games. Also, work. Uh, honestly, I kind of ran into a really weird thing about that uh, last uh, last year, about blue light and how it uh, how it gave me constant headaches. <laughs> because I didn't realize that it was bad for me to keep looking at screens all the time while I'm doing work. Well, there's a, there's a cool little solution to fix a lot of them, and it comes in these. Uh, these neat little things that uh, make me look slightly different now with my mask on. GMG Performance Eyeglasses are a solution. See, GMG Performance Eyeglasses act as a shield against this blue light. It helps to reduce eye strain, improve your concentration, and it encourages your eye reflexes. They sent me actually a couple different pairs. So there's this one, uh, and then the ones you saw me wearing earlier. And GMG is going to be uh, releasing a new generation of their glasses for Black Friday. So this new generation is even more resistant and effective against blue light in order to improve the overall gaming experience. And uh, turns out, number one thing I needed last year, blue light blocking glasses. Because uh, those consistent migraines, not fun at all. So special Black Friday sale, 50% off discount until November 29th, 11.59 p.m. PST. So you got yourself a little bit of time, but only a little bit. So make sure to click on the first link in the description to be able to get your very own pair and improve your ability to be on the computer for longer. So thank you for watching, listening, for this very, very different interaction. And now, on to tonight's story. I remember it like it was yesterday. Mom was at work. My brother Daryl was watching me. Daryl was older than me, about six years, and he was kind of a jerk. Dad had left right after I was born, and Mom had to work two jobs to keep us fed and clothed and keep the lights on and the roof over our heads. Maybe Daryl blamed me for leaving Dad. And that's why he was usually so mean to me. I mean, he was never violent. Though I got, I got the feeling he wanted to be sometimes, but he was always teasing me. He always told me there was a monster in the basement who would eat me. He told me there was a ghost in the attic, that the boogeyman would come to take me away. About all the perverts who would scoop me up off the street someday to do stuff. I didn't really understand at that age. He liked to scare me. And I think that's how we got on the subject of the corn man. It happened one afternoon when we were playing hide-and-seek. Daryl rarely played with me, not unless Mom made him. He was being slow about counting, just trying to wait for Mom to go to work so that he can go back inside and keep watching TV. He was counting, and I was hiding out in the corner where I knew that he wouldn't find me. As he finished, he stepped out into the corn, knowing that's where I am. He started looking, cursing, and stomping around, as he couldn't find me and seemed to be getting pretty frustrated, and finally... Finally, he says the words that I'll never forget. Better come out, turd, before the corn man gets you. I stood up. He was pretty close to finding me, and I asked who the corn man was. Daryl smiled wickedly, seeing another opportunity to scare me and get himself back inside as well. The corn man, Daryl said, lived in the cornfields that seemed to perpetually surround our house. The field was filled with corn during this time of year, and Daryl said that the corn man patrolled it and got little kids that went out into the corn to play. He said that the corn man couldn't see you if you stayed still. If you stayed stock still, not moving an inch, he wouldn't see you, and he'd think you were just another stalk of corn. I told him not to lie, but he said it was true, and said we should get back inside before the corn man caught us in the field. We were both in the living room, Daryl gripping the remote and flipping through channels. His mom said goodbye and left for the night. He had spent that week tormenting me with stories about the corn man that were usually just ways to get me to do stuff. The corn man will come to our house if he smells garbage in the house. Better take it out before he smells it. The corn man comes to take away messy children, so you better clean up around here. The corn man loves to eat tattletales, so go ahead and tell mom you saw me smoking. I hope I'm awake when he comes to get you. However, that night, that night he grinned as someone knocked on the door 
and told me to go get it. I prickled. I, I didn't want to go out after dark, not after he told me that the corn man mainly hunted at night, and usually for kids who were out after dark. He pushed me with his boot as I dithered, and I stumbled to the door as someone pounded on it again. My hand shook as I reached out, turning the knob slowly as I pulled it open. I sighed, happy to see Reggie and Clyde for the first time in my life. Reggie and Clyde had been Daryl's friends since elementary. Mark was usually with them as well, but I suppose he must have been off doing something else. They were often involved in Daryl's shenanigans, and I kind of hated seeing them come around. Tonight, though, I was just glad that they weren't the corn man. I turned to tell Daryl that his friends were here, but he was already heading for the door, putting on his leather jacket. He told me that he was going out, and I asked where he was going after dark. Not that it's any of your business, but we're going to go summon the corn man so he'll give us a wish. I felt my mouth slip open and asked him why he would do that. Well, in the stories, if you complete his challenge, then he grants you a wish. But, he said, turning back towards the door, you'd better stay here. You'd probably be too scared to come out into the cornfield after dark. I agreed with him. Until I realized that meant I would be home alone. At night. By myself. I had grabbed my coat and I ran after the three of them before I could think better of it. The three of them were standing by the cornfield, cigarettes winking on and off as I approached. Clyde elbowed Daryl and pointed to me. Daryl grinned, the widest I'd ever seen him grin, and the effect was pretty terrifying. It looked like a ghoul from a zombie movie in the cigarette light. Well, 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 look who decided to join us. Tried to get a wish too, turd? No, I said, snuffling a little in the mixture of fear and mucus. I just didn't want to be at home alone. What are you talking about? You never said you could get wishes from the corn man. Daryl took a long drag off his smoke, the light making his face look like a jack-o'-lantern. Well, the word is that if you stand in the field and say the magic words, the corn man will come and test you. If you can stand as still as a corn stalk, not moving, not getting caught, he'll grant you one wish. But if he catches you, your blood will water his cornfield. So, sound like something you'd want to do? I shook my head nervously. The wind rustled the corn, making me shudder. I didn't want to go out there, but I... I didn't want to stay in the dark alone either. He snorted at me and rolled his eyes, pitching his cigarette away from the dry cornfield. Well then, go home! You're gonna be a baby. The rest of us will get wishes, and you'll just be home pissing your pants. I shook my head again. You must have taken that for acquiescence. Then come on! Or don't, I don't care. They set off into the thick cornfield and I followed after them. The sea of stalks whipped past me as the three bigger boys walked in front of me. It was dark. The night birds and the sound of animals turning up around us. I was shivering. It had nothing to do with the night or the chill in the air. I was scared. Terrified. And the jostling boys laughed and whispered to themselves as we walked towards the center of the vast cornfield. When the corn surrounded us, we stopped. And Daryl turned to look at us. Okay, so now we chant the special chant to summon him to where we are. He stood in a triangle looking at me. And I moved up to make it a diamond. Corn man, corn man, come to me if you can. Corn man, corn man. I can stand as the corn stalks can. Corn man, corn man, still a stone, not like a man. Corn man, corn man, still and quiet as the corn stalks can. He looked at us as he finished and told us to chant with him. As we raised our voices to the sky, I began to slur my words as my teeth chattered. I was terrified. Standing in the cornfield that had been the setting for so many nightmares, and listening as we summoned the creature that had stalked me through the hated fields. Why had I come with them? Would I really have been less safe at home? Wouldn't I have been fine as long as I stayed inside? I heard my brother's words as he told me about how the corn man came after kids who were alone drifted through my mind, and I... 
I felt myself start crying as I chanted the words to summon the corn man. When we heard the rustling, Daryl told us to be quiet. All right, stand still so he can't see you. If you move, he'll catch you. Then you'll be dead. All four of us stood as still as we could. The corn rustling as something came towards us. I hoped that maybe it was the farmer that owned the land. I mean, he was a nice guy, but he didn't like people playing in his cornfield after dark. If not him, then I... And I hoped it was some of the teenagers who usually kicked out of the field, like... Let it be anyone but the shadowy monster that was the corn man. He was like a scarecrow with, with corn stalks for hands and a, a mouthful of black teeth in my dreams. He could grow very high on his corn stalk legs... He was faster than anything ever, even Jason or, or Michael Myers. Or... As we stood in the cornfield like idiots. I saw the sack head of a scarecrow come through the stalks, and I had to stifle a scream. He was wearing overalls and a straw hat. His face was sacked with green paint. And he came lumbering up over the corn shakily. He had normal hands, but one of them was holding a scythe and the other a hatchet. As he came stomping out of the corn, I held as still as possible, not moving a single muscle. He was real. He was actually real. In my mind, I believed in him, but I had... I, I had hoped that he wasn't real. It's hard to explain, but some rational part of my mind knew that it was all a goof by my brother to scare me. Now I was forced to cower as we watched this terror hunt through the field for us. He moved like a wraith, silent and sure, except for the crunch of old corn husks. He smacked at the stalks with a scythe sometimes, and I had to stop my teeth from chattering as he turned to finally look at my hiding place. Until then, he had lumbered around like one of those adults, just pretending to look for you. I felt like he knew where I was. He was choosing not to find us. And now the game was up. I moved my eyes around, not daring to turn my head, but I couldn't, I couldn't see my brother or his friends anywhere. Had, had they made a break for it? This was their idea, after all. Why would they run? Had, had the corn man gotten to them? No, I... And I would have heard that. They had to have abandoned me. Daryl had finally gotten tired of having me around and decided to have the corn man do his dirty work for me. Mom and the police would search for me, but they'd never find my body. It would, it would water the corn forever. As my eyes rolled around looking for them, the sack head turned towards me, and the creature started walking in my direction. I, I was speechless, utterly terrified, and as I stood like a statue, I felt a warm stream of urine run down my leg as the cloth hood came within inches of my face. I could hear his raspy breathing underneath the hood, smell his air as he stared down at me, and I found myself wishing that he would just get it over with already. We stared at each other for a count of twenty before the corn man blew out a raspberry of barely contained laughter and let his weapons fall to the ground. Are you kidding me, Daryl? Your brother pissed his pants! All three of them came out of the tall cornfield laughing like donkeys. The mask came off to reveal Mark's stupid, sweaty face as he guffawed at me. They surrounded me like a pack of jackals, all pointing to the piss stains on my pants and the liquid running down into the dirt. I felt the tears falling again, but my body was still locked in that rictus of terror. Dylan had tricked me again. He had terrified me and humiliated me, and now I would have to walk back home with cold, wet pants as my brother and his friends laughed at me. I wanted to run away, but my legs weren't quite ready to spirit me away yet. Probably the only reason I was still alive. I saw Mark jerk suddenly, the smile dribbling off his face as something squelched from his stomach. It splattered something across my brother and his friends, though they noticed it too late. I, however, couldn't help but miss it as it pattered across my face and chest. It was blood, thick and red, and they turned as a horror strode from the fields of lush corn stalks. My mind hadn't done him justice. The corn man, or whatever he was, looked more like a terrible husk doll that you sometimes saw at the farmer's market when my mom took us. It appeared to be woven together from corn husks and corn stalks and the silk atop the plant. 
It was dirt and leaves and corn cobs and live plants. Its entire body seemed to move like a living vine. It moved with its complete form, its entire being, and it waded into Daryl and his friends like a force of nature. Clyde had turned to look at what was wetting him, and I saw the twisted gnarl of roots and corn stalks slam into the side of his head. His neck audibly broke, bone poking up from his collar as he fell sideways into the corn. Daryl screamed, Kyle cursed loudly, and I stood rooted in fear as the corn man went about his work. No way, Daryl yelled stepping back as he turned to face the creature. No fucking way! It's real? Kyle asked. The creature momentarily stalled as it looked at them, speculatively. No, I made it up! I made the whole thing up! It can't be real! It can't be real! It can't- He died with that negation on his lips. The corn man extended out his thick-rooted arm, and it grew as it coursed towards Daryl's head. Daryl's screams were cut off as the root covered his face. His throat bulged as it poured its roots and stalks down his throat. I could see his body twitching, his limbs convulsing as the corn man pumped his roots into him. My cheeks were wet again, my terror-fueled tears streaming down my face as Kyle ran for it. He disappeared into the corn just in time to miss the fate of his friend. Daryl's body erupted in a spray of corn stalks as they burst from him in a red spray. He crumpled, very dead, as his form was shredded. He lay in pieces, his body watering the corn, just as he said. I was resprayed with blood, this time being washed in the deluge. But I was still frozen with fear. My body had hit that point where it was numb, too scared to move. And as the corn man stalked in, I could hear my ragged breathing intensify. I couldn't move. I, I couldn't speak. And I just knew that this was the, this was the time when my blood would water the cornfields just like Daryl's. He stood face to face with me, much like Mark had when he was pretending. And as the seconds spread out, I felt like my heart must surely stop, and I would, I would die of fear. And then. To my amazement, the corn man spoke. You've passed my challenge. You truly do as the corn stalks can, and have earned a boon of me. What do you desire of the corn man? I, I was speechless, my, my body unmoving, as I continued to stand like a statue before this hulking terror. His voice sounded like the whisper of wind to the corn stalks. And if I hadn't been frozen in fear, I would have shuddered out of my skin as his words hit me. He loomed over me, his body bathed in the blood of my brother and his friends, and I was left to shudder and shake as he stared at me. He cocked his head, the roots making a strange creaking noise as he studied me in my fear. Come, come now. There must be something you desire. Why else would you brave your death at the hands of the corn man? if not for a boon. I looked up at him. He even hunkered down. He was taller than me, and my eyes, my eyes streamed with tears, my body unable to move. Very well. Know then that the corn man owes thee a boon, a favor, as you people say, and he will be back to collect it in time. Think well over your wishes, that my debt may be paid. He lumbered off after Kyle, his steps groaning as he moved, and I was left standing amidst the stalks. That's where they found me the next day. That's where they found what was left of Daryl, Mark, and Clyde. I was catatonic for days. I even remained still as a stone in the field all night, not daring to move as the fear held sway over me. Even when they called out to me, I couldn't answer them. My legs ached and my body cried out for rest, but my legs refused to unlock. My mother's arms were warm as they wrapped around me. I was cold. Hungry. My throat felt like a desert, but I couldn't move or speak. They kept me in the hospital for weeks trying to figure out what happened to me. The police questioned me ceaselessly, my mother ending every interview by telling them that it was pointless to question me. They assumed that I had watched the four boys being murdered. Kyle's remains found further out in the field, and I had been traumatized by the event. I stayed like that for almost three weeks before waking up one morning to find my arms and legs were ready to obey me again. The police came back to question me, but I told them I had blacked out the whole thing not wanting to ever speak of the horrible things that happened in that field. 
I only tell you here a decade later to come to terms with what had happened to me and try, try to put it all behind me. That and to, to see if anyone else knows of the corn man and his ways. See, he's come back over the years to collect on his favor. I, I still live with my mother, my body locking up sometimes when the fear takes over again. Once a year, on the anniversary of my brother's death, he comes to ask if I'm ready to take his boon. Sometimes he appears in my room at night, sometimes outside my window, but, but he always speaks in that strange voice and he asks if I'm ready to ask for my favor. Every time I remain still, my body seizing up and my, my jaw locking, and every time he goes away, I've gotten better at getting myself under control again. Last time I was frozen for less than an hour, but... I've had to go back to the hospital over the years when the catatonic state reemerges. One day, one day I'll be able to ask for something so I never have to see him again. Until then, I suppose I'll be, I'll be haunted by the visage of the corn man. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I wanted to tell you thanks so much for watching tonight's video or listening to tonight's episode of the podcast. For those of you that want to hear more than just me, there's also a new app out called Chilling. The Chilling app is currently available on Android and on iOS, and it has new and exclusive stories just for the app done by myself and many, many other narrators. More importantly, I think that the coolest thing about it is the ambience feature that allows you to set your own tone and background sounds and music. As the app calls itself, it's a more intense way to relax. And as always, I want to give a big thank you to all of my contributors on Patreon. You guys are the real MVP. You guys keep the lights on here and allow me to do a whole bunch of cool things like exclusive stories. And a very special thank you to all of the big skeleton patrons, such as... Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Brian Ars, Bobby Carmen, Stephanie Butler, Tristan Pelton, Chance Burnett, Diana Kraus, Mask Note, Rashad Collins, Joshua Mullen, Zavium, Dan Pham, Matthew McNeese, Shelly J, Ben Spates, Anna Storm, Jeremy H, Raltazol, Nana, The Morgan, Diamondella, Melted Lake, Tully Sue, William King, Reaper 61167, Darth Miver, Michael Ortiz, Satanic Aries, I Soda Hatred, Nessie, Parafa Panda, Bardo Hawk 764, Melancholy Corpse, Ferb, Lambda M98, Harley, Billy Morrow, Sashi Sazaku, at Grizzly Olsen Pro, Caden the Spooky Boy, Zay Nightshade, My Body Sounds Like Rice Krispies, Lord of the Weebs, Jay, Miss Alexandra, Suji Campbell, Stricken, Azarine Fox, Fried Chicken 12, Freddy Krueger, Michael Scarborough, Happy Birthday, Jason Wilson, Infernal One, Lisa Cottrell, Caspian, Jordan Nels, Hades Nephew, Tater Chip, Acid System, Prozac and Pancake Appreciation Society, Cryptic Nightmares, Kiri the Sloth, Tommy Green, Fester Lampshade, Sky Harbor, Nico Kyle, Raphael Rodriguez, The Ginger Bros, Aaron Stormcrow, Daniel Polson, Trace Miles, and Corey Kenshin. Thank you guys so much for being a part of Patreon, and for everybody who's down there in the description, and everybody who even contributes just one dollar to patreon.com slash mrcreepypasta. And, as always, my friends, sweet dreams. <laughs>